this is something a bit like I would argue with the Eucharist, with the real presence, where scripture is incredibly explicit. Unless you are baptized with water and spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Um, this is, you know, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. These are two areas that I think, again, you want to use sola scriptura. I did use sola scriptura and I got to those conclusions because I'm like, I don't understand how you could literally sit here and say, these things we do not take literally. These are only metaphorical in this circumstance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I would say that salvation, like, again, the Catholic Church would say the same thing. The Catholic Church possesses the fullness of truth. Unless you eat my flesh, unless you drink my blood, you know, it's the atom bomb for me. It was, that was like, yeah. you know, I'm like, okay, so, and, you know, I heard the arguments, of course, I, I went through them many times myself, which was that, okay, but the context here is of symbology and, you know, you're actually talking, you know, you have to understand scripture and like scripture, of course. And, but the early church was accused of being cannibals by the Romans because they were perceived of as eating the flesh of Christ. Um, every single early church father understood the real presence. Every single one. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. In John chapter 6, Jesus Christ identifies himself as the bread of life and the living bread. Now, obviously, Jesus is speaking in the figurative sense. He's not saying that he himself is a literal piece of bread that is to be eaten in order to obtain eternal life. He is speaking figuratively. And John chapter 6 is a perfect example of people misunderstanding the words of Christ because they interpret them literally and physically. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. A key to understanding this passage is contrasting verse 40 with verse 54. In John chapter 6, verse 40, Jesus defines the will of his Father in regards to salvation. He says, And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Notice what it says in verse 54. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath what? Eternal life. Sound familiar? May have everlasting life. Look at the last portion of verse 54. And I will raise him up at the last day. So in verse 40, Jesus promises those that believe on him everlasting life. And he says, I will raise him up at the last day. In verse 54, we see the same thing. Jesus said, whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. So according to Christ, speaking figuratively here, to eat his flesh and to drink his blood is to believe on him. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. In verse 58, Jesus again is abundantly clear that he is speaking in the figurative sense and is not to be taken literally. Notice what he says. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna. Notice that? Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. The fathers in the wilderness physically consumed literal bread. I'll say that again. The fathers in the wilderness physically consumed literal bread. Jesus just said, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. The bread of life 
The living bread is eaten how? By believing on Christ, receiving everlasting life with the promise that he will raise us up at the last day. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So again, understanding the word of God requires us to rightly divide the word of truth. Jesus said, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. Think about that. The spirit quickens, the flesh profits nothing. So am I to interpret Jesus' words in the physical, literal, fleshly sense? When Jesus himself said, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. Watch this, verse 63. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. You see, friend, to eat his flesh and to drink his blood is to believe on him. And to believe on him is to receive everlasting life with the promise that he will raise you up at the last day. If you are not 100% certain that you're going to heaven, I encourage you to watch the video in the description below, How to Be Saved, The Bible Way to Heaven, and be saved today. God bless.